All right, so welcome. Um, we have 103 people uh, out there. So hello, museum families, and welcome to the very first Royal BC Museum at Home Kids, a play date of sort uh, through screens across British Columbia and the world. And also today is April Fool's Day, so happy April Fool's. So it wasn't a joke that we're doing this today, we're actually <laughs> doing it today. So happy April Fool's. Um, my name is Chris O'Connor, and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. Usually you would find me sitting on the floors of the Royal BC Museum, exploring museum galleries with visitors, um, and maybe I've done that with some of you out there. Um, but today I'm sitting on the floor in my living room, like many of us. Uh, for now, our living rooms are both our schools and our museums. We are all in this together and we are adjusting so well to the changes around us. And we are doing a great job being kind to each other. Mostly, I know your brother can get on your nerves sometimes. Uh, I am so proud of you. So, and so um, thankful that you're here and that we're here together. I'm really happy to be able to spend this time with you today and Victoria as well. So, and before I start, I wanted to do a sh special shout out to Charlotte, who is celebrating a birthday today. Charlotte's turning nine years old. So happy birthday, Charlotte. Yay, happy birthday. Yeah. So in this format, you can see me, I'm your host, Chris, and our special guest each week. So today our special guest is Victoria. So wave, you could wave, Victoria. Oh, this side. Um, <laughs> though we can't see you, we can see a list of your names and we can hear from you using the chat window. So give it a try now. Look at the chat icon at the top of the screen, click on that, and you'll see a chat window open up to the right of your screen. At the bottom of the chat window, you can decide to share your comments with the panelists or, or to everyone. Um, and a heads up, we'll be drawing today, so make sure that you have some paper and something to draw with. Now, it is April Fool's, so I, I did uh, find some dinosaur jokes. Um, so <laughs> bear with me here. I'm going to sort of spread them in throughout the half an hour. Um, so what do you call a dinosaur that never gives up? Victoria, mm, do you know? I don't Anyone know. Anyone quickly on the chat? A try, try, try ceratops. That's a bit of a groaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like it. Why did the T-Rex eat raw meat? Ooh. Because its arms couldn't work the oven. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll have a couple more at the end, but we'll, we'll stop there. Um, I like it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so during the session, I'll look at the chat window and share um, what the group is writing. But feel free, to, so feel free to ask questions as we go along. So, without further ado, let's meet our special guest for today. So, today's special guest is Dr. Victoria Arbor. She is a doctor, but not a medicine kind of doctor. Mm -hmm. She's a doctor of ideas, and specifically a doctor of dinosaur ideas and fossil ideas, meaning that she thinks a lot about dinosaurs and fossils. She is the curator of paleontology here at the Royal BC Museum. And for this session, she's the official dinosaur artist of the museum. <laughs> so hello, Victoria. Hello. Get away. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm hanging out here at my kitchen table in my apartment with my easel set up and ready to draw a special dinosaur today. Yeah, great. Well, we're, we're looking forward to it, so take it away. All right, so I just saw a little comment about the bright window behind me. I'm really sorry. This yeah. is unfortunately the only spot I can do this in my house, so you'll have to bear with me in the not Maybe, ideal lighting today. Victoria, if you just uh, rotate the camera just rotate a little bit. A little like that? Does yeah, that a little bit more. Oh, uh, then I'm not gonna be able to reach. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I want to be you're sure blocking some of and the drawing. So, um, but thank you. I know it's kind of tough right now. All of us are working in our home studios right now. Um, so uh, today we're gonna draw a dinosaur that's sort of an old dinosaur friend of mine named Buster. 
Uh, Buster was just named as a new species uh, unique to British Columbia last fall. So Buster's formal scientific name is Ferrosaurus sustadensis. He was found up in northern British Columbia along the Sustat River. It's not really close to any towns in particular, but it's kind of like an hour's flight north of Smithers. So it's pretty cool. Um, Buster is not a very household name kind of dinosaur. So Buster is a little bit like if you took a Triceratops and this little guy called a, an Archaeoceratops and you like smushed them together and made a little dinosaur. And so that group of dinosaurs is called the Leptoceratopsid. So we're gonna draw one today. Um, but I also just wanted to say that I'm gonna draw, um, a, a, I'm not a professional artist, but I do a lot of drawing as part of my job. And um, so we're gonna draw like a fairly simple, a little bit cartoony Buster. Um, but if you wanna see a really beautiful life reconstruction of what Buster probably looked like while he was alive, um, my friend and colleague Raven Amos did a beautiful illustration of Buster that we can find for you online and share later. Um, Buster is sort of an interesting challenge because we only know about Buster's skeleton from a few bones. So I'll show you on my phone. Let's see, there we go. So Buster is only known from part of the shin and part of the shoulder blades and some of the arm bones and the toes. Um, so one of the fun things about drawing dinosaurs is sometimes you don't have a whole skeleton to work off of and you have to put all of this scientific information together in order to create an illustration of what the dinosaur looks like. So it's not just coming out of our heads. We use these fragmentary specimens we compare them to more complete skeletons of related species. We have to think about things like the muscles that would go over those bones and what the skin would look like and what color it might be and what its behaviors might be. And so I'm gonna talk about a bunch of those things as we draw Buster today. And if you have questions, put them into the chat. And if you have any questions about other things besides Buster, that's okay too. But uh, without taking too long, let's get started drawing Buster. Um, I'm gonna start with pencils. I'm gonna press pretty hard into my paper here um, and then I'm going to go over to marker and color it in so it'll be a bit easier to see. Um, so I'm going to start with kind of a scaffold for Buster. Um, so I'm going to draw basically a bunch of circles and triangles to get the rough shape of Buster on my piece of paper. So we're going to draw, and let's just make sure we can all see this. We're going to draw a nice circle for the head. I'm going to have to press a little harder here. So we're going to draw a circle for Buster's head and then a circle about the same size for his sort of shoulders and chest, a little bit bigger one right behind that for his hips and belly, and then we're gonna draw a nice kind of soft triangle for his tail. So just like that. Then I like just, to draw- Just jumping in here for a second, yeah. Victoria, sorry. How big was Buster? Oh, Buster is not too big. Buster is maybe like, a meter, two meters long, but remember a lot of that's tails. So what we just drew here, that's about half of Buster's body length. So in terms of body size, a little bit like a bighorn sheep or like a really big dog is kind of like the size Buster is. So Buster is a fairly small dinosaur. That's a good question. Okay, so believe it or not, this is the rough start to almost any dinosaur you want to draw. You can just draw a couple of circles and a triangle for the tail and that gets you started. Um, I'm going to draw in some legs here. The legs are going to be mostly like nice round triangles and we're just getting our proportions here before we start doing some of the details. So I'm going to start with the, the hind leg because I think that's a little easier to start with. So dinosaurs have nice big beefy leg muscles. We know this because of some of the bumps and scars on their leg bones that show where the muscles would attach. So we know they've got nice beefy leg bones. Buster doesn't have really long legs. So we're gonna just draw kind of a round triangle for his upper leg right about there. We're gonna draw another round triangle right about here. And another smaller triangle for his foot. And so the triangles are gonna get a little bit smaller as you go down the leg. So a nice big triangle, then a smaller one, and then a really small one for his foot. And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing for the front leg. We're gonna draw a small triangle or maybe even an oval for the top of the arm. And the front leg is a lot smaller in Buster, so we're not gonna make it too big. 
and then another sort of triangular oval for the forearm right there. And I'm going to make him walking. So I'm going to make his little last little hand squiggle right there. So he's kind of like taking a step forward. So we're pretty sure that Buster probably walked on four legs most of the time, but because their arms are so short, they might have actually spent some time walking on two legs, or maybe they were good at balancing on their hind legs if they wanted to get at leaves or, or ferns that were a little higher than they could normally reach. And now we can basically start to fill in the head a little bit. So Buster has this kind of short snout. Um, he's related to Triceratops, so they have a really short snout. So we're gonna give a nice little, um, almost like a beak here. I'm gonna make him smile a little bit because I can't, because we're just having fun here today. Like Triceratops, they have a little shelf at the back of their head, like a little tiny frill, just like that. And they have a nice deep jaw. So he's gonna have a nice round lower jaw, like this. And one of the kind of goofy things about Buster is that his eyes are up like pretty high on his head. So the eye is actually going to be right about here, right at the front of the first circle you drew and right up towards the top of his head. They have kind of a silly head. <laughs> Victoria, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna jump in a second. Yeah. Um, just a request to slow down just a little bit. But yeah, that gives sure me thing. an opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. Is Buster, yeah, sure. a, is Buster a carnivore? Oh, great question. So Buster is an herbivore. So Buster eats plants. They have this sort of sharp beak at the front, but it wasn't for eating meat like an eagle. It's a little bit more like a parrot's beak. So they have no teeth in their beak at the front. And then in the back of the jaw, they have all of these like grinding teeth. So they've got teeth that are good at sort of snipping and shearing plants. Um, so we don't know exactly what Buster ate, but we do know that it probably mostly ate plants. Um, it was probably picking plants that were a little bit hard to eat um, because it's got that little like sharp beak at the front. And yeah, so probably eating plants most of the time, but what exact plants we don't know for sure. And we had a question earlier, how do you know what it looks like if you only have five bones? Ah, only... so even though we only have a couple of bones for Buster, there are a couple of other species that are close relatives of Ferrosaurus, things like Leptoceratops and Montanoceratops. Leptoceratops is from Alberta and Montanoceratops is from Montana. Uh, and they're known from skeletons that are basically complete and articulated, which is pretty cool for a dinosaur. It's not very often that you get all the bones in place. Um, and there's actually a couple of skeletons like that. So when Buster was found, um, it was found, its skeleton was kind of found like rolled down a hill um, in a, a pile of like rocks that had sort of eroded out of a hillside. Um, but because Buster's bones, some of them were actually still articulated together. So some of the toes were articulated and the shin bones were still next to each other the way it would have been while it was alive. So I am speaking suspicion that if we had found Buster a little bit earlier before it like eroded out, that it might also have been a full skeleton while it was in the ground, which would have been pretty cool if we could have found a bit more. And can you remind us where you found this or where this was found? Yeah, Buster was found along the Sustut River in Northern BC. Uh, and the closest town on a map is Smithers, but it's kind of up in a very remote area where there's not a lot of roads or towns or things. So if you go north of Smithers, British Columbia, you're sort of in the general area. So I think that was probably enough time for everyone to catch up. Yeah, <laughs> Someone I think. made a comment that the- me down and, and yeah. ask questions as we go, so. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna connect up a couple parts of Buster now. Um, we've got the nice sharp beak and deep jaw. We've got the eye sketched in. We've got a little horn on the back or the little sort of frill on the back of his head, kind of like a triceratops frill, but a lot smaller. Um, they also get a little sort of bump on their cheek. So we can put a little cheek bump right about here, right behind where the mouth ends. And now we can start to connect the neck and sort of the, the line on the back of the body. So he has a nice deep neck. So you wanna do the neck right from underneath where the little frill ends. And then a nice deep neck along here. That starts to look a little bit more like a dinosaur. And then their bellies are nice and deep. So you wanna connect sort of from the bottom of your two circles right about to here. Maybe you can make him a little bit thicker on the back of his tail there. 
So that's looking pretty good, I would say, as our rough sketch. Um, we also have to put the legs that are on the other side of the body in here. So I'm going to do a leg over here. We're not going to see all of it. So there's our little triangles. And maybe the other arm that's kind of standing on the ground here. So those are just the little arms in behind. Nice and sketchy. Oh, we throw out a nose. There's a little nostril right there. <laughs> right towards the front. So I think with that, I'm going to start going over my pencil sketch with some markers. I really like to use markers, and then it's going to be a lot more clear. This will give a chance for everyone to catch up as well, and we can talk about some of the details on Buster. So I like to use these brush pens, but you can use whatever you like. Um, is there, nice is there any chance, pen. Victoria, sorry, if you could bring it a little yeah. closer to the screen? So it's... A little closer. Let's see if I can do that. Maybe I'll bring the screen a little closer to it. And that a little bit closer here. How's that looking, everybody? And then you could bring this, uh, tilt the screen down just a little bit. Tilt the screen down a little. How's that? Great, better, for All sure. Right. I need a little space to get my own arm in here too. <laughs> we're all just making this work while we're at home. It's kind of fun and interesting challenges, isn't it, everybody? All right, so we're gonna make it a little easier to see now because I'm gonna put this black marker onto it. Um, so I'm gonna just start at the front of the head. Let's see how that starts to look. Is that gonna be a little easier for everyone to see? I think so. So I'm gonna use my marker and start making the outline a lot thicker. So it'll be a lot easier to see. So I'm just going around here, it's his beak and his little smile and a nice deep jaw and his little funny cheek bump. We can't forget the eye. We don't know exactly what shape dinosaur eyes and pupils were, but I'm going to give him kind of a dark eye with a little like light sort of little sort of reflection on his eye. There's the nose right there and they have a beak. So I'm going to give him a little line to show the beak here. And I'm going to put a little detail here showing that there's sort of a little, a little ridge and a little uh, shallow depression on the back of the frill as well, because that frill has a big hole in it uh, covered up with skin while Buster is alive. All right, so let's draw some front arms here. And don't worry if it's if you're a little bit behind because we're gonna do some coloring as well. And maybe you can do some of the coloring after this is all over too and share your drawings with me. So I'm gonna draw this arm now. So we're just kind of going around um, the, the lines that we put down. Uh, so Buster has five fingers on the hand. So they're all very little fingers. Um, but they've got five fingers on their hands. It's going to be a little bit hard to draw. So I'm just going to draw little tiny fingers here. One, two, three, four, five. They're probably going to be a little hard to see on the screen, but that's what they look like. Just sort of little, like a little paw almost. And the back leg, remember he's got a nice chunky front, uh, chunky thigh, and then it comes down into the shin. On the back leg, they have three toes. And Buster actually sorry, has sorry, Victoria. I'm just yeah. sorry. I'm just jumping in again. Just yeah, sure. a question of um, it, you're fast, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> um, so let me just uh, jump in with a couple of questions, just to let people yeah, catch sure. up a little bit. Sounds good. Um, how sharp is the the jaw, Buster's jaw, and what is the cone sharp. on the top of the head for? Ah, the little cone on the back of the head is kind of like. Um, a, a frill on a triceratops. So it's going to be kind of like, um, if we looked at Buster in front view, it would be very wide. I got to like get my head in here. It'd be very wide and relatively thin. So I'll use my triceratops toy as an example here. So it's going to be kind of thin. And if you looked at it in front view, it would make this nice round sh shape around it. Um, yeah, so if you basically pretend that you've got a triceratops with no horns and a very short frill, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So when you look at it in side view, it looks kind of like a little horn almost, but it's really a nice frill. I hope that makes sense. They do have very funny looking heads. 
So leptoceratopsids like Buster also have these very big heads um, compared to other dinosaurs. If you think about some dinosaurs like long necked dinosaurs, they've got very small heads on the end of a long neck. Uh, Buster has a very big head on the end of a short neck. So they've got this kind of big head, um, a very sh deep but short tail, and then short legs. I'm going to work on finishing the hind leg and yeah, keep telling me to slow down when you need me to slow down and ask me some questions. We'll have some dinosaur fact breaks as we go. All right, so Buster has five fingers on the front hand, but three fingers on the foot, on the hind foot. And Buster's toes, that's one of the actual fossils that we had, um, they actually have like pretty sharp claws. They don't have hooves like some of the bigger dinosaurs, like, like Triceratops and duckbill dinosaurs. They have kind of like hoof-like nails. Um, but Buster actually has these kind of long, sharpish claws. So we're going to give him little sharp claws just like this. One, two, three. And that's our foot back there. And that's our hind leg. I'm going to draw the neck and connect the belly. They have nice big bellies. And I'll draw this other foot here with his nice sharp claws. And the front arm that's behind is always a little bit harder to draw. So don't worry too much about that. I'm just going to make it kind of a, a little flat thing because we wouldn't necessarily see all of the toes there. So while you guys catch up a little bit because I'm going a bit fast, I guess. I'm going to erase out a couple of my pencil lines here, and that'll make some of this a little bit easier to see, I think. And why don't you guys ask me some questions about dinosaurs, anything at all? So, so Victoria, I have some questions from the chat. Yeah, perfect. Um, what, what were Buster's predators? Ooh, good question. So one of the interesting things about Buster is that we haven't found any other dinosaurs from the place where Buster was found. Buster is the only dinosaur we've found from this spot in British Columbia. Um, so we have to guess about what other dinosaurs there might have been and what they might have um, looked like and who was eating who. But we can make some guesses based on dinosaurs that lived at about the same time in other parts of North America. So uh, Buster's closest relatives lived in Montana and Alberta at about the same time. Buster is about 67 to 68 million years old, so that's pretty close to the end of the age of dinosaurs. Um, and that's pretty close to like when the big asteroid hits and, and unfortunately causes the mass extinction that kills all of the dinosaurs except for birds that are around us today. Um, so at that time, elsewhere in Alberta and Montana, the big predator is Tyrannosaurus rex. So we don't know if we had T-Rex in British Columbia, but it's possible that we did um, because we've got a dinosaur that lives at about the same time as when we find T-Rex in other places just across the mountains. Um, and so that would have been one of Buster's big predators, probably a big Tyrannosaur, if not T-Rex, then something like T-Rex. Um, so Victoria, and yeah. So Adelaide asks, um, what uh, what color would Buster have been? Oh, great question. Maybe it's time to start giving Buster some color on this yeah. picture while you guys catch up. So <laughs> and while, while you do that, I I'll ask a couple. I'll just ask a couple of questions because there's a lot of interest in the size of different parts of Buster. So the yeah, snout, the legs. The snout, the legs, yeah, that sounds good. So the snout is pretty short. He's got kind of a very round, almost circular head with a really short snout. There's his eye, and then we've got a nose and a little, a little sort of beak here. So they, they, they're, they don't have a nice long snout like a lot of other dinosaurs. Pretty short snout, and then this little ridge at the back. They're a little frill. Um, in terms of colors, so the co dinosaur colors, we don't really know a lot about dinosaur colors. There's some paleontologists that think we can find evidence for colors like brown and black by looking at fossilized pigment, although not everybody agrees with that. But dinosaurs are probably more than brown and black. So lots of animals today are brown and black, so that makes a lot of sense. But birds, or um, dinosaurs' closest relatives today are birds, and birds come in lots of different colors. Their feathers have all kinds of colors. Um, animals like Buster were probably scaly, and modern-day lizards have lots of colors, too, in their scales. So 
Um, I'm going to give Buster a kind of brownish color because I'm going to make him look kind of realistic-ish. But you can color your Buster whatever you like. If you want to make Buster hot pink or purple, I say go for it because we don't really know for sure. Um, I was coming up with some ideas about what co colors Buster could be last night. Um, I was looking at some pictures of birds and lizards and trying to get some ideas for color patterns for the one I was going to draw. And I was thinking a bit about what Buster's ecology would have been like, what sort of environment Buster lived in. And so we know that Buster lived in a very forested area. When I went to look for more of Buster's skeleton a few years ago up along the Sustat River, we didn't find more of Buster's bones, but we did find lots of fossil plants. Uh, we found evidence for um, lots of broad-leaved trees, so things like um, most of the trees you'd see outside in a forest today. And we found evidence for a tree called Metasequoia, which is the dawn redwood. It's not super common, but if you live in Victoria, we actually do have Metasequoia trees in Beacon Hill Park. Um, so you can see some examples of those. They're kind of like a, pine, a, a sort of shaggy, weird pine tree. Um, and so animals that live in the forest that are also small are probably going to use camouflage um, and try to blend into their surroundings for protection. So I came up with some ideas for, for different buster colors last night. I'm going to give him kind of a brown color and maybe some spots and stripes that would help him blend in in a sort of dappled uh, foresty environment. Um, so I'm going to work on sort of coloring a bit here. Uh, but you can, I'd love to hear about what colors you think Buster should be. I'm going to color in with my brush pen so it goes really fast here. Doo -doo. Um, yeah, so Chris, I don't know, do people have some more questions they can ask me while I'm doing some coloring? Coloring at home? Yeah, so Brielle would like to know if they were meat eaters or plant eaters. Ooh, good question. Yeah, so Buster is a plant eater, but exactly what plants, um, Buster was eating, we're not too sure about. Uh, it's got that beak and grinding teeth, so it was probably plucking some sort of plants that might have been hard to get at, and then grinding them up with its teeth. And then we have some suggestions for colors, so green, Ooh. magenta, yellowish. Ooh. Ooh, I like those colors. Oh, I'm using yellowish, kind of, so that's good. Yeah. I love magenta, though. I'd love to see the magenta Buster. It's kind of hard at this angle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually you're, draw. You're doing like, a great job. Like Victoria. <laughs> so I'm just drawing really fast. So it's going to look a little bit rough. Um, you guys can take much more time if you want to make a beautiful Buster drawing. I'm just going to lay down this kind of color here. Um, we had the suggestion for rainbow, which Ooh, rainbow. sounds great. <laughs> I love that. That would be super fun. So the yeah, question, so really a question for you, Victoria, is what is your favorite color? Ooh, my favorite color, I really like sky blue, and I also like green a lot. And I especially like when you get orange and blue together. That's like my favorite color combination. So I used to live in an apartment where I painted the walls blue and orange because I thought that was a lot of fun. All right, so I've given Buster a nice sort of yellowy brown color, and I think I'm going to give him some spots. Um, to help and just to let you know, Victoria, course. we have about two minutes to the, um, but what that will okay. be our official session, but we can, we can yeah. stay on a little that bit longer. Um, well, I'm going to just, I'm going to, maybe we'll finish coloring. So this is a great opportunity. So you can pick any color and color buster in whatever colors you like. Um, you can also use books to give yourself some ideas for dinosaur colors. You can give them spots or stripes or sort of give them maybe like color patterns of your dog or your cat that live in your house with you. And if we have any like adults or bigger kids that want to get a little bit more into paleo art, I have a book that I really like written by my friend Mark Witten. It's called The Paleo Artist's Handbook. Um, and it has lots of really cool examples of um, art from uh, a long time ago and new art. And it also has lots of cool things like diagrams for how to draw dinosaur skulls and body proportions um, and lots of really interesting references here. So that one I find really good. If you really want to learn a lot more about paleo art, that's a great resource. I'm really lucky to work with lots of different paleo artists um, at museums and when I'm doing my research papers. Um, yeah, so I hope that this has been like a chance to get to know Buster and learn a little bit about how we bring together all these different ideas to make a dinosaur drawing. 
and I'm going to work on giving him some spots. I'm going to give him spots kind of in rows, I guess. Sorry, I had my, I had my, no I was talking to myself. Oh, the no. mute, mute on. Um, just a few other people. So last question or last two questions before I, we finish. Um, a couple of people asked again, where, where does, where did Buster live? Um, yeah. And then also a question, and you might have mentioned this in the beginning, but the scientific name as well. Oh yeah, good question. So Buster's scientific name is Ferrosaurus sustadensis. And that refers to the place where it was found. It was found along the Sustut River in northern British Columbia. It's only known from one skeleton, and it's not a complete skeleton. Uh, Ferrosaurus means the iron lizard from the Sustut Basin uh, and Sustut River. And so Ferrosaurus means iron lizard. That's because it was found along a railway line that was getting constructed. So the, the railway lines are the iron road. So we figured the iron lizard was a good name for Buster. And Buster is the nickname that I used for a long time before it had a formal scientific name. I'm going to give him some stripes on his jaw. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to share a screen now. Sure. Just as a ending, that's, there's Woolly Mammoth. Um, mm -hmm. So for everyone, the 100, 100 people visiting, uh, us. So I did want to say that uh, we've had a little glitch with our Zoom uh, account. So we assume that it was going to be more than 100 that we could invite in, and we will have that starting next week. We will also be um, uh, sharing that out. We will sh share it out to Facebook Live as well. So um, so bear with us. But today, only 100 people, only 100 spots can could join us today so but we'll also have victoria back uh, again yes. <laughs> so this is rbcm at home kids we would love to see the art that you made the the dinosaurs that you made so if you could share that with us one way you can do it so that you have paper and pencil you can send me an email directly so c-o-c-o-n-n-o-r at royalbcmuseum.bc.ca and share the image and then next week i'd love to share some of the, the the busters that were made today you could also um share it through social media through twitter or instagram I, someone already mentioned that they've already shared something on instagram um just tag the museum at, at royal bc museum uh, or hashtag rbcm kids keep exploring so we have our learning portal which is uh, on our website uh, it's a, a space with lots of great information. Victoria has a, a pathway up there about Buster. Um, we have other pathways on dinosaurs and fossils. We also have a playlist right now with activities around with um, with uh, dinosaurs that are one of our museum educators, Jocelyn Levac, created. You can go there, rbcm.bc/lp, or just Google Learning Portal at Royal Lisa Museum. And then next week. We're going to be joined um, by Dr. Joel Gibson, Building Critters with Dr. Joel Gibson. So he's a curator of entomology. So today was all about dinosaurs. To next week will all be about insects. So I'm going to come back to our screen. And um, so we'll officially end now. Uh, Victoria, do you have any final words? No, I just really appreciate everyone coming to draw some dinosaurs with me. I hope you got a chance to learn a little bit about Buster. And like Chris said, go learn more. There's some great pictures of Buster's fossils and where Buster was found because we had lots of questions about where it came from. Um, yeah, and uh, I really hope that you guys will share your pictures with us because I really want to see them. Yeah. And uh, again, it will be next Wednesday at 11 o'clock and we'll have more spots for, for people to join in. Um, we'll definitely have you back, Victoria. So I'm gonna, it's officially ended now. I'm gonna stop the recording. Um, okay. But if anyone wants to stay on and uh, ask some more questions um, while Victoria finishes with her <laughs> dinosaur. But, um, and if out there, if you are um, a youth or an adult, uh, we also do our RBCM at home series on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 o'clock. Um, 
And if you're an educator, we're gonna start one for educators uh, soon too. So um, really happy that you could join us. Uh, we love our museum family um, and uh, we miss you in person, but we're glad that we, we could hang out uh, across screen. So um, take care of everyone that needs to leave, but if you want to stay around just to ask some more questions, feel free to do that too. All right, bye. <laughs>